선수 그냥 등장했거든요 이수영 선수 그냥 에이스가 아니라 정말 슈퍼 에이스 Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to set number 4 with STX against all odds leading 2-1 to one here and they have now sent out their other big gun of course their first big gun was Calm and this, this guy though, is apparently their real ace this is Bogus, the Terran player and he will be playing against Neo G Soul Key a pretty good Zerg from Moonjin Stars so this should be a very nice matchup here, actually. Um, this is actually the first ZVZ... Is this actually the first non-mirror we've had? Yeah, we've had a ZVZ PvP PvP. So this is actually the first non-mirror today. And there is Soul Key, looking baller. Apparently there's a lot of fans in my chat. I see a lot of uh, cheers for Soul Key. So let's see if Soul Key can pull it back for his team and take it to, uh, to game 5 here. Or will Bogus finish it off for STX? And I can I can feel the STX fans is so hopeful right now because STX is seriously the underdogs of this season. Uh, and it looks like the map is going to be at Ground Zero. Um, nothing too fancy about this map. The naturals are cliffable, uh, you know, Lost Temple style. But other than that, um, I, I I can't think of anything too outrageous about this map. Um, at least in this matchup. So, here's open to a good game. There is Bogus. Warming up his hands. Uh, looks like Casper Referees is checking that he's okay. Looks like we're going to have a bit of a pause here while the commentators talk about something. I don't really know. But I guess, uh, I guess I'll, I'll do my own plugs. Oh, no, it looks like we're in the game. Oh, it looks like Sulky just couldn't figure out how to join the game or something. Look, you, we can see Sulky just joined the game. Alright, good job, good job, Sulky. Figured out how to get into the game. That's, that's good, good first step. Good first step to being a pro gamer. Joining and leaving games. Useful skill. Useful skill. Anyways. Yeah. Okay, looks like, I don't know what they're talking about. So, uh, guys, if you have any suggestions, comments, questions about these casts, um, please make a post in the English uh, Pro League commentary thread on Team Liquid. And um, I guess the other important announcement is that the vaults for uh, for my SPL casts are no longer be going to be uploaded to YouTube due to uh, the International Esports Group claiming copyright. So I'm going to start uploading those to Blip TV. I will still be making spoiler VOD posts uh, in, in my thread as usual. Uh, they'll just contain links to Blip TV rather than to YouTube. So hopefully uh, things will still more or less be the same from the viewer's point of view. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, alright, good. So hopefully we're getting started now. Hopefully we are getting started now. Or I might even have to bust out that uh, that story that I'm never going to tell you guys. Uh, and as we can see at the bottom, it looks like the overall the head-to-head -head score between these two players is three to one in favor of Solki. So not uh, not too, looking too good for Bogus there. Although you know stats aren't everything. And you know to be honest though, I would I would actually like to see a game five. That'd be quite exciting. Uh, we've seen a lot seen a, a couple of actually I don't know if I should I don't know can I spoil. Can I, can I spoil the last couple, like, yesterday's series and the series before? Does it matter? Okay, cover, cover your ears. Cover your ears for 30 seconds. Alright, so we've seen, like, way too many 3-0s recently. And it's just sad. So I don't want that. I don't want that. Okay, spoiler's done. Spoiler's done. Good. Uh, so, it looks like Bogus is going to be the orange Terran in the top left. And so that would make Solki the, uh, I believe, the Teal Zerg in the bottom right. Alright. So, we are going to have a cross map game on, uh, on Ground Zero. Hopefully, means it's going to lend itself to a nice. Uh, 
nice long macro game. Nothing too fancy. Uh, now, interestingly, I mean, already, you know, when I see a ZVT on this map, I just instantly think of uh, Flash versus Great. Oh man, that was such an awesome game. Um, that was from the match between, uh, of course, KT Rolster and Air Force Ace. You guys should all should all watch that game. It was just, it was pretty lulzy. Uh, anyway, looks like we just have a depot in the main for Bogus. And uh, nothing crazy coming out of the Soul Key either. <coughs> Sorry if I randomly go quiet, by the way. That's me muting myself as I cough violently and try not to uh, cough my lungs out. So it looks like we have barracks being made uh, kind of at the top of the ramp. Um, everything looking standard so far. I would imagine he's just going to go for a one racks expand. Looks like we have two drones coming out. That's going to be one for the hatchery. It's going to be a 12 hatch at the natural. And the other one is going to be a drone scout out on the map. And oh, never mind. It's not going to be a one racks expand. He's actually taking his gas here. No, that's kind of interesting. Uh, usually, when Terrans go for a tech build like this and take the gas, they go for a wall in. But perhaps you just can't make a good wall in on this map. But I mean, yeah, going for a, a mech build or a tech build without a wall in could be a little bit risky. Anyway, let, let's let's see what Bogus does. Uh, I'm afraid I'm I'm not too familiar with his play. I don't know if he uh, particularly likes to go for something. Uh, for example, Lita and his two port Wraith is. Uh, it's a very nice example of something that you know just a player tends to do in one matchup. I, I don't really know any too much about Bogus. Sorry. I'll try. I'll go read up on him. And that's going to be a factory. Indeed, it is. And looks like we have guys pulled off gas. Okay, so what this is going to be is a one uh, vulture. He's going to make one vulture and expand. Um, it's, it's basically just the one factory expand. And looks like uh, the marine has actually walked out to the bottom here and pushed the drone away. So Sulky is not going to see what's happening here. Uh, meanwhile, Focus is going to get an SCV into the base and he's going to see a three hatch build from. Uh, from Sulky. Very, very standard stuff. Uh, oh, newbie friendly time! Alright, so basically the two the two main styles of uh, ZVT, barring any kind of, you know, four pool or, or crazy one base shenanigans, uh, are, you know, either two hatch or three hatch. If you go for a three hatch build, it's, uh, you know, 95% of the time three hatch muta. Uh, can also be three hatch lurker, but almost certainly three hatch muta. Um, you're, it's, it's a much more economic style. Um, you basically go, you know, get your three hatches up, go for a lair, get your spire, uh, make a control group of mutalisks, and, you know, use those to keep the Terran occupied while you take a third. It's very standard uh, ec economic style where, you know, get a pretty quick third base, you, you take up the hive of standard, very, very standard stuff. Uh, if you go for two hatch, once again, the most common thing is mutas. It is possible to go for two hatch lurkers, uh, but I'm just going to talk about mutas because that's, that's much more popular. Uh, when you go for two hatch muta, the main difference between two hatch and three hatch muta is that you hit the Terran when uh, he has stim on his marines, but he doesn't have marine range, so you have a window where you can do a lot more damage with the mutalisks. But the thing is, since you have only you have uh, only two hatches rather than three, your, your economy is weaker and you have less larva to play with, so you actually have to do more damage with the mutas. Um, so that's just kind of the basic, uh, the general overview of ZVT there. But anyway, we do have a Vulture at the front here, taking down these links. I'm a little bit surprised that there's no Sunken up for uh, for Sulky. He's actually going to take a lot of damage from this Vulture. Oh my goodness. No Vulture. He had abs... Man, Sulky did not sniff out that this was a mech build. If, you know, if even the slightest indication that it was a, a tech build, uh, and, and Sulky should have made a Sunken to defend against this Vulture, but since he didn't, this Vulture is going to do so much damage. With this Patrol Micro, with pro, uh, pro professional level Patrol Micro, you should be able to take a lot of links, but it looks like Speed does finish for the links, and Slow Vultures, uh, Slow Vulture will get taken out by Speedlings, uh, even if you have Perfect Micro. So, uh, so Sulky kind of dodging a bullet there, but uh, forced to make a lot of links as we saw. It looks like we actually have two vultures out now, so gonna continue to do damage. 
Um, so I, I I hope Sulky's actually got a sunken up. It looks just, just looking at the minimap, it looks like he actually doesn't have a have a sunken up. He's actually going to use the speed things to try and trap the vultures, almost getting us around there. On that one vulture does scratch one of the vultures, but it looks like vulture speed is actually now finished. So speed vultures against speedlings will be microable. Oh my goodness! And it looks like Sulky's just going to try and run the links into the uh, the Terran's main just to buy as much time as possible. But it looks like Bogus is just going to ignore it. He sent both his vultures down to attack. He's uh, using a reinforcement vulture from his factory to defend his main. Uh, looks like we do have an armory up as well. Uh, just going to go for some standard mech play. So it looks like it actually is going to be some uh, some some legit mech play rather than uh, just like a one fact expand into some kind of bio with fast vessel or something. Um, he is actually going to go for, uh, for for mech. And a nice block there with the drones, by the way. Oh, looks like we have light on the screen. Um, another good... Uh, Wait a minute, which team is he on? Wungjin. Lights on Wungjin, right? Oh my god, I mean... I don't even... I'm pretty sure he's on Wungjin. Oh no, it looks like... Oh, man. Those speech of ultra is so scary. Um, if they run into the main, that'll be like lights out for Sulky. So really got to make sure he keeps those links on the ramp to, uh, to prevent any such catastrophe from occurring. But I think uh, Bogus is definitely in a good position. He forced so many Zerglings out of... Uh, out of Sulky, you know, and and every larva that's that's uh, made into a Zergling is is a larva that's not drones. And it looks like the vultures actually found that they can actually sneak behind the natural and deny mining there. So once again, Bogus is really abusing these vultures to the max. And if he pulls, oh man, this is actually really smart. Look at this. He's gonna try. I think he's gonna try and pull the Zerglings, pull all the units away from the ramp, and then run those two vultures into the main. But it uh, looks like Sulky actually is keeping all the drones there, going to prevent that. And he does have his Mulesks out now, so he will be able to defend his drones. But I mean, Bogus has done so, so much damage. This is very, very nice. Uh, nice play from Bogus. Now, having said that, so it looks like he's got four Goliaths. I would imagine that that is uh, Goliath range. The Charon booster is being upgraded to the machine shop, or being researched. And he doesn't seem to have any turrets that I've seen. Uh, it's possible that he has some in his main as natural. It looks like he, oh, very nice, is buying some time with these vultures just to uh, get some more Goliaths out, get his turrets up. Yeah, okay, it looks like he is starting to build the turrets now. And, uh, I mean, the range, once the Goliaths have range, they'll be extremely effective. Uh, at dealing with Mulusks, they have you know really really long range and, and pretty nice uh, nice and high uh, health, so it's it's harder for the Mutas to just pick them off uh, like they can do against a Medic Marine. So looks like the turrets are up. A few things are actually running in here. There's it looks like only two Marines at the front and a couple of Goliaths. I'm a little bit surprised that there's no bunker actually for Bogus. It's pretty common to get a bunker uh, when you're doing some crazy vulture or just just mecking in general. You usually get a bunker at the front to help you defend. I would say, especially if you're going to do some crazy vulture harass like that, uh, you know, once the, I mean, because the harass is going to end eventually, and when that happens, you got to be really wary of some kind of huge all-in attack, counter-attack from the Zerg, since he's taken so much damage from the harassment. So yeah, it's, I'm a little bit surprised that there's no bunker at the front. Um, there's the STX coach looking onwards, hoping that his uh, his player Bogus can actually close out the uh, close out the match. But it looks like now uh, it is uh, Sulky's turn to abuse uh, his units a little bit there. Going to do some unit harassment over that, that cliff behind the natural. Looks like he's just going to fly home now. Some vultures out on the map laying some spider mines. Looks like we do have a Hydro Den. Uh, doing a bit of a wall off, not quite walling off completely though. Uh, and... I think there was an evolution chamber in the back, I'm not actually sure. Meanwhile, we do have a third base at the uh, at the 3 o'clock position for Solki. So, oh, looks like, are these two vultures going to get in? Looks like they do snipe the drone on the ramp. One vulture does make it into the main. Uh, I don't know if it looks like he's going to get one drone kill, but the Mutas even are going to come back and finish that guy off. So what, uh, so what, or sorry, what uh, Solki needs to do right now? is um, just take a bunch of bases. Uh, I mean, the, the, the standard way to play against the uh, mech is just to just to out-expand it. Because in this early game, as you can see, uh, there's no real way for the mecking player to be too, too aggressive. He, need, he really needs to build up a, a, big, a decent sized uh, core of units before he can push out and make it cost-effective. You know, in low numbers, um, mech units are actually not particularly cost-effective uh, against like Mass Hydra. 
Uh, so basically, Bogus is going to turtle up a little bit, and this gives uh, this gives Solkia a nice window of time to drone up and, and take expansions, which he needs to do because the Mech army, once it gets rolling, is a lot more cost efficient than the Zerg army. Uh, the standard composition for Zerg is going to be Hydralisks and Mutalisks to deal with that. Um, but but overall, the Siege Tank Goliath composition is going to be way way more cost efficient. So what the Zerg needs to do is have a lot more bases than the Terran and just out macro him. Uh, so even if he's losing, you know, like twice as much. Uh, twice as many units per cost-wise, um, he's able to produce you know three times as many units because he has way more bases. Uh, you know, the, obviously that's a pretty big generalization, but that's essentially the way you want to do it. So it's like uh, more vultures running around laying mines. It's actually very very smart. Um, without overlord speed, uh, it's going to be a little. It's going to be kind of risky for hydras to run around the map. Now it, it's funny because in theory, since hydras have like an instant shot. Um, you'd think that they could actually just like A-move across spider mine fields, kind of like a, a Terran mech army of Goliaths and Siege Tanks. If you have enough, you can just A-move across spider mines and it doesn't really matter because your tanks will just, or your units will just kill the spider mines as soon as they pop up. But Hydras often actually bug out a little bit when this when spider mines are involved, so uh, until until Sulky has Overlord speed, it looks like he actually has Overlord speed already. So as long as he keeps Overlords with his Hydras, he should be good to go. You still got to be a little bit careful about those mines. Um, it's, it's, pr it's surprisingly easy to just lose a ridiculous number of Hydras to a lucky mine. Anyway, there are three bases up now. Uh, one thing I would like. Oh, by the way, he uh, Solki is actually taking the uh, the six o'clock ish. I guess the five thirty ish base there, as you can see, taking a, a quick fourth. Whereas Focus is only on two bases. He's not being greedy. He's just doing exactly what I said just now, which is taking a lot of bases. But I would like it if there was at least a, a sunken at each base, uh, especially a three o'clock base, because I mean, Focus has already shown that he's you know he likes to do ultra ras, and um, I mean. Well, a lot of times what will happen, in when you're going mech and TVZ, the, the two primary units are the Goliath and Siege Tanks, and they both cost gas. So you often end up with a lot of excess minerals. Uh, it's actually kind of similar to what happens in TVT as well, where you just end up with the excess minerals. So what, what's, what can often happen is that you know the Terran will just make you know an extra round of Vultures and send them out to go harass, and they don't actually cost them anything. Oh, looks like a couple of random units, a couple of random mines going off there. Uh, I mean, the, the Vultures are basically completely expendable for the mech, uh, the mecking Terran, so he'll just send out, you know, like a random group of vultures to go and harass your mineral line, and even if he loses them all, it doesn't really matter, he's just trying to kill your drones and, and disrupt your economy, so I really would like uh, some sunkens uh, at each base, but it looks like um, uh, Solki is just gonna, just gonna use his Hydras and Mutas to kind of control the map a little bit. He's actually taking the top right natural, a very fast fifth base, this is actually extremely fast. I mean, if uh, if Bogus plays defensively and just takes that the, the third base, which it looks like he's pushing out to do, um, Bogus is, or sorry, Solki is actually going to get ahead of him, like way, way far ahead of him on the economy. Looks like we have some uh, color glitches in the stream, I hope everything's okay, guys. Um, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> I guess if, if, if things are not okay, a mod will yell really loudly. If you're a normal person and not a mod and you yell really loudly, I'm gonna ignore you. <laughs> Sorry, I just, uh, just can't get too distracted from the stream. Anyway, we do have a drop going in here. Three overlords. This is very, very smart. Uh, the mech army of the Terran is extremely immobile. So it's very very difficult to deal with you know these just these small counterattacks and actually it looks like he's gonna go and snipe the armies. Oh my god, huge move from Solki right here. Those armies are both spinning. They have crucial crucial mech upgrades in them, but he's gonna snipe both of them. Oh my god, brilliant move from from whatever his name is, Solki, the Zerg guy, the Wungjin Zerg, pulling out a. Oh wow, that that was really really nice. That is absolutely even if he doesn't kill anything else, that was completely worth the 12 Hydras. To stop those upgrades, I mean the upgrades are so so crucial to the mech army, and it looks like though uh, getting a little bit uh, antsy with those mutalisks, and he will get that that drop cleaned up. But that was that was such a great move, and you could see it on Bogus' face uh, a little bit a little bit set, upset about that. And if you look at the mini map, the five bases should be up now. I don't know if he's actually got mining at all. Of them looks like uh, yeah, he's he's got mining now at the six o'clock. He's got a sunken going up there, and uh, the top right natural. Once he gets to that mining, I mean his economy is going to be out of control here. Focus. He's playing the mech style kind of as he should, um, playing playing very defensively. He's, he's he's got his third base up now, and he's just kind of setting up a nice position. But Solki, I have to say, is actually playing you know the counter to that brilliantly with the drop, the mass expanding. This is just so so impressive. By the way, we do have plus one carapace on the mutalisks and plus one attack on the hydras. That is standard. Uh, basically, the mutas you you actually prefer armor over attack. Um, 
because it'll they're they're actually kind of more of the uh, the tanking units. You send when you send the the Hydra Muta army and the Muta's going first and kind of tank a lot of the Goliath shots and basically are there to you know go in and, and snipe some siege tanks so that your Hydras can really deal with damage. Looks like we do have some Hydras going down or sorry Vultures going down to the six o'clock position. Nice Hydra block uh, at the choke. Looks like they're going to switch to targets and run into the main here. Is there a sunken in the main now? I hope there is. Nope. Looks like no sunken in the main. So he's going to lose some drones here. The Mutas though are going to come back in time. Looks like uh, four or five drones will get taken out, but that is all. And if we look at the supply counts, it's actually very close. Um, 138 for the Terran against 124, and oh, it looks like we actually have a split VOD here. No worries. Going right along. <clears throat> so, back in the game, looks like <laughs> that is a lot of siege tanks. And I believe that was a command center. So, uh, looks like Sol or sorry, Bogus not even going to go for any kind of you know big three base uh, um, three base timing here. You know, just max, max get get a max army or you're like a 180 supply army and, and, and good upgrades and go and attack. Uh, having said that, he actually lost his armory, so that that timing would be completely gone. But he's uh, he's just going to slowly creep out and, and just try and take more bases. But um, look, at, looks like from the mini map, uh, Solky's actually taken both corner expansions, the top right and the bottom left. And it looks like he was going to, going to go in with his mutalisks to harass, but uh, some preemptive irradiates there from Bogus is going to deny that. Uh, although the mutas weren't actually clumped very tightly anyway, so nice pulls from uh, from Solki. And it looks like Solki's got two one upgrades already on his uh, on his hydras and only one O. The observer is showing that army snipe really doing the damage. And oh my god, we actually have a lurker drop on the cliff behind the natural here. I mean, this cliff. <laughs> Stereotypically, you'd say it's good for Terran because he can siege tank drop, but we actually have a lurker drop here, and it's completely denying mining at the natural. I mean, Solki, Solki is playing this absolutely perfectly. He is actually doing every single thing that he should be against mech style. I mean, Bogus isn't making any big mistakes here, he's, but he's getting torn apart. He's literally getting torn to pieces right now. Just look at the minimap. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven bases. Solki's on seven bases. Bogus is on three. It's like, I mean, I don't care how cost-efficient you are, seven bases against three is just ridiculous. So it looks like uh, Bogus is now going to push across to the top right. I don't know if he scanned that and, and saw that um, Solki has both bases there, but Solki's just loading up for a drop. He's just going to go for a counterattack. He's not even going to engage. He's just going to go straight into the natural. Mute is covering for the overlords. And there we go. Mass drop all over the natural. There's only one siege tank there. There's a bunker as well. But that the natural is just going to get completely ravaged. He might actually snipe the armory there. It looks like one of the armies was rebuilt at the natural. He's going to deny an upgrade once again. I think he should really target that armory. Ah, uh, he should target the armory. I don't know what he's targeting right now. Perhaps the siege tank. But it looks like... Uh, Bogus, I don't understand, he's actually moving across the map with just half his army, he should really bring the other half. Mech army needs to stick together to be strong here, I, I really think this is a bad idea. Now Solki can actually just bring all his units and crush this, looks like he is setting up for a nice flank here. I really think this was a bad push out by Bogus, oh my god, Mutas and Hydras going in here, Scourge as well to take down the Science Vessels, nice irradiates going down, nice defense matrix, and actually it looks like Bogus, despite only having half his army, is going to be able to clean up here. I think, I think Solki actually... Uh, sent too many units to go for that drop. Looks like he didn't actually even kill the armory, and 2 1 is now finished for the mech army, so. Sea Shanks, man, they're pretty good, even though. Even though Solki has been playing this uh, brilliantly. It looks like he is gonna gonna lose a 3 o'clock expansion. He's lost his army, and, and just the. Uh, I mean, this just shows you the power of the Terran, the Terran mech army. Look at all those Sea Shanks. That is a ridiculous number of Sea Shanks. Oh my god. And with the with the science vessels overhead, uh, he's gonna get be able to get some nice irradiates if if Sulky thinks about doing some kind of uh, you know mass muta to deal with that. So this is actually I'm I'm actually shocked at what I'm seeing here. To be honest, I think Sulky really deserves this game. But well, he does have swarms out, he does have lurkers out, and it looks like we do have uh, some links denying that uh, that uh, that 12:30 ish position there that Bogus was thinking about taking. I don't think he actually transferred anything over. And the, the dark, Lurkers under Dark Swarm are actually going to hold this here. Of course, Lurkers under Dark Swarm are, are literally invincible against uh, against Terran mech units. There's there's no no, no mech unit that can, can attack them. Uh, even the Siege Tank Splash will not damage borrowed units under Swarm. It looks like there's not enough there at the uh, the 6 o'clock base. So it will get taken down, but I mean... Uh, even, even having lost the 3 o'clock and the 6 o'clock... Uh, Sulky still has five bases against three, so he's still not in a terrible position. But uh, it, it looks like, I mean, ha having defended all those, um, having defended all those, all those drops and harassments, uh, this this big push from 
from Bogus has been quite effective. And you know, it's funny, this this kind of thing actually happens a lot of times, uh, and I actually always see, you know, so, you know, when I'm watching the streams live, uh, people sometimes overreact and they say, oh, Terran is imbalanced, and you know, Bogus should have, should have, or sorry, Sulky should have been winning easily, but if you think about it, Sulky devoted a lot of resources to all those drops and harassment. Like that drop at the natural that we saw earlier, he must have had, you know, 30 Hydralisks perhaps, uh, maybe, you know, 25 Hydralisks dropped there, uh, and thus, when they were killed, they're not part of the army, so once Bogus holds that, and his main force moves out, you're actually short, like, 30 Hydralisks from your army. So, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not unreasonable <laughs> that after all that harassment, Sulky's main force would actually be not that strong. Uh, and, 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 you know, I mean, Terran Mech is, is pretty good anyway. So it's not completely outlandish, uh, but it does seem a little bit unfair when it happens. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, so, looks like Bogus is now going to push towards the top right. And looks like we have double Nidus. I don't actually see where the Nidus exit is. A couple of vultures at the bottom left. I would assume there's plenty of sunkens there. Yep, looks like we have some sunkens there. And uh, Science Vessel just going to irradiate the Lili Defilus. A couple of random vultures and a Goliath there. It's interesting that uh, spacing. Whoa! Hello, lurkers! Uh, that's an interesting spacing of Sunkens, by the way. I think that's on purpose to minimize the splash and just like to buy more time just to have like uh, rows of Sunkens. But uh, this base, now there is a Nidus there. I hope Bogus Sneak or Sulky, man, I keep getting these guys confused. Sulky's gonna have to flood out a bunch of uh, a bunch of units from that Nidus to save that base. I think if he loses his bottom left base, that'll actually be a little bit too much. I mean, you know, since he was already on seven bases earlier, losing you know one or two bases isn't the biggest I isn't the biggest deal, but he can't keep losing bases. Okay, yeah, he is gonna he's gonna clean this force up uh, pretty easily. And I don't know why the observer is so excited about that gas. Uh, Bogus on four gas. That's exciting, I guess. And Bogus, oh man, this this attack is actually quite scary. And oh my goodness, Bogus's push is actually looking really really strong here. Solki, I don't know where all his units are. He just suddenly, even though he had what must have been an outrageous economy for a long time, he just suddenly has no units. If we actually look at the, the bottom right, he actually has a lot of uh, minerals in the bank. He's got over, over uh, 1,500 minerals in the bank and 700, almost 800 gas now. He actually just needs to make something useful. I don't know, maybe he should make some guardians or something. I mean, in the, in the late game, guardians can be quite good against mech. Queens, queens are good. You, you need something though. The Hydra Muta Ling isn't going to really cut it against this, uh, this mech force. I actually wonder if the lurkers might have been a mistake. If he might have, uh, if he should have saved that gas for some other hive tech unit. Uh, I don't know, ultras, guardians, etc. Because right now he's just not able to hold off the Terran steel. It's like a couple of vultures taking things out. Hmm, I'm I'm just trying to think. What can Sulky do? Uh, this ah, uh, this Terran mech, man. This is. What they call imbalanced. Imbalanced! Siege tanks too good, too strong! Some nice harassment here at the natural. I'm, I'm actually wondering though, was that worth it? Uh, or what? Because, I mean, killing a, a handful of drones here at this point is nice, but I wonder if it would have been better to keep those to, uh, to, sh to, to block for the siege tanks. But oh, a nice scourging there of the, the science vessels. But yeah, I mean, I wonder if it's just better to keep a buffer of vultures. Oh my god! What? Whoa! Vulture is turning back at the last second from those drones. Okay, looks like, uh, wait, were they transferred away from somewhere? I'm not really sure what happened, but a nice harassment from Bogus. Bogus is actually just seriously showing off some great late game here and pulling himself back into the game. I thought Sulky, I thought Sulky was in an amazing position after all the early harassment, after all the bases he took, but he just has no answer to the mech army. I don't know what he can do. And it looks like uh, Bogus, you know, he, he's not making any headway at the top right. He's going to push towards the natural once again. But interestingly, I mean, Sulky is, is just high, kind of hanging on by a thread here with these uh, lurkers under Dark Swarm. He's just holding on by the skin of his teeth. Meanwhile, Bogus has taken the 9 o'clock expansion. He's just slowly creeping across the map here. And uh, a nice sunken spread once again, just going to buy some time. I'm just going to keep the mech army back. It looks like he was trying to take the bottom left natural. That is going to have to be cancelled. Um, he's got some random links for a counterattack. He's not paying attention. Ah, go, 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 juggling. Juggling. 
gonna kill some random turrets, gonna kill some random SCVs. Um, Lucas actually pulled SCVs there, he's got vultures, I don't think that was actually necessary. You can just put them back now. So if you just look at the mini-map, I mean there's spider mines all outside Solky's natural. There's a big push going towards the top right. It's still kind of barely being held off there, and uh, I think... Oh, the Phyla barely gets the swarm off before it's irradiated. I think the spider mines actually just killed everything there. I think all the lurkers actually died and... Oh, it's good! Nice, I think he used like four Scourge on that science vessel though. So not optimal, but uh, still very good. And yeah, 9 o'clock is running. That makes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 bases, but the main and natural are, should be more or less mined out. So it's still 3 uh, three bases still for Bogus. And Sulky is just like having to, is just constantly <laughs> kind of barely holding on to his bases, losing a base, retaking a base. He's moving out now with some Lurkerling Defiler. Not exactly the greatest unit composition against Mech. Uh, and oh no, especially not good when there's so many spider mines on the field. However, he's moving here to the to the 1230-ish position, but there's just so many siege tanks. And look at that, a nice a nice wall there. Look at that, a missile turret wall at the front, so the lurkers couldn't even get in. Meanwhile, the siege tanks of the main force of Bogus that is out on the map is going to go hit the 630 base once again. That was retaken by Solki, but I don't think it's going to last for too long. But once again, the swarm with lurkers under it. But the lurkers, oh man, as you can see, only one lurker getting down there. When they are not borrowed, the lurkers will still take damage from the siege tank splash. So uh, it's only once they're borrowed that they that they can't be that they can't be damaged. But only one of them does get down. Um, and you know, I mean. You know, even though Bogus is looking strong right now, he actually he just can't do anything when you know when a dark swarm goes down with lurkers under it, he just can't attack under that, and and that's what's keeping Sulky in the game. But Sulky is just seriously on the back foot right here. Bogus is just dictating everything. If you just look at the map, Bogus has complete control of the middle. It's like sending a dropship in. Uh, looks like he's going, actually going for the main here, and a couple of lurkers pushing forward, gonna take out the leading siege tanks, but. This is just, I don't, it, it just looks really difficult, like, I don't want to call the game, I don't want to say it's over, but it just, it's just so frustrating for Solki, because it's just hard to think, like, what, what he should be doing right now, at least for me. Anyway, Siege Tanks are going to take down the uh, 630 position. Dropship going to get cleaned up by some Hydralisks. And, oh, we have a nice drop here going into the 1230. Oh, uh, dropping Lings all over the Siege Tanks. Lings and Hydra's very, very nice drop. Looks like he's going to force a lift on this Command Center. Going to kill all the Siege Tanks. Going to get down the turrets. Going to get a few SCVs as well. With, I think he's actually going to get the Command Center. Oh man, that Command Center. Actually getting taken down quite quickly there. Very, very nice. <coughs> Excuse me. From, uh, from Sulky. But in return, the 630 has been taken out. So I think that actually puts Bogus down to like maybe a base and a half. Looks like he's re-expanding now to the bottom left natural. Uh, I'm pretty sure Bogus's main and natural are gone. His third base is probably... Actually, it looks like from the minimap, it looks like his third base is gone. So Bogus might actually be only on one base now, only the 9 o'clock base. And this is this is actually a very interesting play from uh, from Solki. He's just staying on on Lurker, Ling, Defiler, Hydra. Um, he's not I don't, he's not made any Mutalisks for a long time. He's not making Guardians. He's not making Ultras. Uh, he's just using all these you know these tier one units, the Hydras and Lings, and uh, and a handful of Lurkers here uh, under the Dark Swarm. And he's doing a really really good job. This is actually a very very nice play. And he's sending in some units, uh, sending in a drop to the nine o'clock that is going to get cleaned up. The Terran's still sieging the bottom left down, looks like he's taking down the front row of uh, some colonies, but some links moving into the uh, the third base of Bogus. I mean, but as I said, that base is mined out, so I don't think he's going to mind losing that too much. He can actually just lift the command center and float it to a different base or something, uh, perhaps retake the, the 1230 with that command center. And more importantly, he does have the, uh, the bottom left natural now uh, pretty much secure. Um, I think Solki's gonna try and make some headway, but look at all those siege tanks! Oh my god, even if there were dark swarms everywhere, the splash damage alone is just gonna kill everything. Yeah, look at that. However, oh, Plague! Nice Plague! I think catching like three, four siege tanks and a Goliath or something like that. I wish he would plague the, the tank club. Oh man, he actually got a lot of Goliaths. Never mind, he got like five Goliaths there. Wow, very, very nice Plague. Of course, Plague, uh, extremely effective against, uh, against Terran Mech, um, because you don't have, uh, well, SCVs don't have auto repair in Brood Wars, so you can't just like send around a bunch of SCVs repairing, or at least Terran, uh, Terrans generally don't, because um, it's just not... I'm actually not sure why they don't uh, repair a little bit more. I, I guess it's just, like not APM efficient. 
uh, to be doing that, because you just have to like right-click SCVs to all your units. Anyway, a ton of units flooding out of the Nidus Canal, but the Terran army is slowly creeping up here to the bottom left. Um, he's got to get some good swarms, some good plagues down, and it looks like he does get the swarms, but there's no lurkers here though, so the Lynx and Hydras will still get killed by the Sea Shank Splash. Looks like Goliath's going in to buffer a little bit, the Lynx are running in, but as you can see, they are getting taken down, and nice scourging of vessels! Solki, I gotta say, has been doing really nice scourging this game as well, and it looks like he will uh, push the Terran back down the, uh, back down the ramp, so he is going to at least hold on to his bottom left base. But Sulky, I would imagine, is getting, uh, it looks like he's mined out his main, his natural's probably thin. So he's up, he's down to this bottom left base and the top right two bases, and oh no, losing a few Hydralisks to, uh, to hot, or to Spider Mines rather, in the middle of the map. Looks like uh, the command center from the uh, 1130 position has floated down now. Uh, probably gonna, I'm actually thinking, is he gonna take like the the 630-ish position or something? But no, looks like Sulky's actually making headway now into the bottom left natural. He's actually forced the command center to lift. The SCVs are evacuating Sul or sorry, Bogus. Oh man, I'm, I'm, so, I'm really sorry, I keep getting these plays uh, mixed up, the names mixed up. The Bogus actually forced to lift that. That means he's down to only the 9 o'clock base mining, and for some reason his saturation there originally wasn't even that good. I, I don't really understand. Uh, he just doesn't have many SEVs, and the Lurker is going in once again. A nice plague on the Sea Shanks. I think that might have been even called the Lurker. No, so he didn't catch the Lurker. So, Solki, Solki suddenly, it, Bogus has, has just run out of steam right now. Bogus actually is down to 75 supply. Solki up at 131. Solki now in a really good position. The, just with just with miracle defenses there, just clutch swarms on lurkers holding like one lurker out of ten surviving, and yet managing to stay alive. And now he's got Lings going into the nine o'clock base. The Terran forces are gonna have to pull back, but Bogus has got so few units left to pull back. Uh, looks like one vulture still denying the 630. Units are gonna come in here and save that. But Bogus is just so low on money. He's got almost no units. Sulky, Sulky is looking really good. Look at that, making a hatchery under that command center. LOL, and he's got four lurkers there. He can just lay down a dark swarm and he'll be perfectly fine. Looks like he's just uh, moving them up a little bit here. And, I mean, as I said, nothing that the mech army can do about that. It looks like Bogus actually just down to a control group of units running around the middle of the map. There's not really enough to do anything uh, too effective here. Mech armies really need to have a, a decent, decent backbone of tanks to be effective. And there's not many tanks left. Uh oh, uh oh, bogus, bogus. I'm actually, wow, I'm actually really impressed now by by Sulky because he looked like he was in uh, some trouble there there in the mid game. And I'm try just trying to think. I don't think there was any like significant. You know, there was there was, didn't seem to be any significant engagement. Oh, nice play again, all those sea shanks. But yeah, there was no significant engagement that that bogus lost or you know any huge doom drop or anything. It's just with slow but steady, solid play from uh, from Sulky and pulling the game back in his favor. So we have more Lurker Ling running around. You know, I'm wondering if perhaps, perhaps Bogus might have done well to lay some more Spider Mines around the map. I mean, um, Sulky is really going light on the Hydras, going heavy on the Lurkers and Lings. So these Spider Mines, as you can see, just perfect against Lurker Ling. Uh, so I'm just, I'm just wondering if, uh, if, if he should have done more mine laying, but I guess, uh, I guess it's too late for that now. And looks like Lurker's running into the um, the last mining base of Bogus, a couple of them getting taken down, but there's a Lurker, it's gonna go in the SCV line, the SCVs are under attack, he's gotta run the SCVs! Ah, SCV! He's losing some SCVs, and GG from Bogus, Sulky! Sulky winning an intense, hard-fought ZBT there, oh my god, just playing the opening so beautifully, and then almost succumbing to the might of Terran Mech in the mid-game, in the early-late game, but just holding on, and pulling it through for his team, he will force it to a game 5 here between STX Soul and Wung Jin Stars. Very, very nice game from both these players. So, let us move on to the next set. The final set, game 5.